What's up guys? It's October 31st, 2023. Happy Halloween. I hope you guys are eating some candy. It's a pretty good day for the Bulls. They've had a two day trend, kind of a very broad trend. Um, in regards to yesterday's video that should be posting today, that would have been posted yesterday, the upload got messed up, so I'm gonna have to remake the video at a later time. So for today's price action, the 31st, it was a good up uptrend. Bulls, uh, it was broad bull channel. Bears made money, but it's better to just buy, buy channel lows and sell channel highs. Sell your long position. Yesterday's price action was kind of the same. It was more of a, Bulls had a gap up and then a pullback. Let's see, to the 50% level, I think. Yeah, this is right around the 50% level. And then they reclaimed it and broke out for a small push higher. There wasn't too much left in the day. And they had already made a big move up from this low. Still a pretty good day for the Bulls after a lot of selling. Let's get into today's price action. Oh, excuse me. The first six bars of the day is selling. I saw this at open, but I didn't take it. It looked like pretty bearish reversal pattern. I think it's a head and shoulders. There was a gap up at open and it sold off. It got closed right away. So I think bears wanted momentum to at least tag the EMA. No selling at lows. And we broke out of the EMA yesterday. And then um, that's where the sell order, excuse me, buy orders are sitting. So bears are getting trapped. One bar is taking out the prior six bars range. Not a good bear trend. I think after this gets put in, the best thing for the bears would be a broad bear channel. So that would be like the best they have because this is damaging unless they you know, started to really do some work and take out more lows. This is damaging for the bear case. Good for the bull case. It shows power for yesterday's price action. Bears get in, might go double top and sell. They get trapped and now the bear gaps are closing. Here was that micro double top into a cell and the bear trap. So bear gaps are closing and bull gaps are starting to open. I'm gonna make this blue and light. See, see, so this was the first bear gap and then bulls closed it and then bulls had a gap, right? So their gap was here, but then bears closed the bull gap. So now, oh, the bulls gap was here. And now bears pushed down and they're leaving this gap open. So that's bull, that's bullish pressure, but the bear gap is closed. Now it's closed. You see how there would be a gap right here and then it's taken out by this bar here. So bulls are keeping gaps open and bears are not. And although bulls aren't necessarily buying highs, these are just really big bars, but there's no continuation. No continuation, no continuation. So yeah, the bars are big, but they're not actually buying highs. They bought lows and it raced up kind of thing, or they had their stop order set. I had a stop order set here. Bear starts to pull back towards the EMA. They're attempting to close the gap and the bulls keep the gap open. Bears get another push down. They make about two legs here and ultimately the gap stays open. They did do some damage. They were able to close it a little bit. Here's one leg, two legs, three legs. This is a wedge bottom bull flag to me. It is kind of climactic, there's three pushes here. Whenever we see three pushes, that can make a wedge top. And technically it did sell. It wasn't a very strong sell, but it was still a good pattern to sell into the EMA if you'd like to. I'm not taking reversals like that, but there is a two-legged pullback. Oh, there is a two-legged pullback into the EMA, so there's nothing wrong with that. Although it does lead to a trap, it looks like there's no continuation and bulls kept the gap open here. So if you're not quick to get out, it could be dangerous. And this bar also raced up right away, so that, that could warn you that there's buy orders sitting at the EMA. It raced up, came down, and then it started to get oscillating and it bounced here. So there are a lot of warnings for you to get out of your short if you took that as a three push up trade. Wedge top into resistance, I think. Bears start to try to close the gap again and it fails, but they do shrink it again. Here we go. So the gap's slowly shrinking. We could say that the bear strength is picking up. 
bulls are not necessarily making new highs anymore so we could say that's like the high of the day for the moment make the blue line yesterday's red high of the day and then today would be blue bulls get a strong reversal here and i think this is enough juice to go for a push up here bears get trapped there's this there is continuation but not strong enough they would have to this bar needs to close around this close to take out the bull stops and then these bull stops and then a new low of the day for the bears they were unable to do that and this bar i think trapped a lot of bears they but these bears they got trapped they go short here and they go short here then when they sell they get out at 50 percent so let's say their entry was at this low and then they scale in more at highs this is the bears 50 percent level so they still made money because they went all the way down to the original entry so they short lose money short make money make money so this was still a good trade for the bears if you were quick enough we were in a range so it's buy low so high and this bar eventually becomes a really nice reversal bar for the bulls when this bar sold it also raced down and then came up slowly so anytime we see a race like that or or a sell vacuum is the correct term not a race it's a sell vacuum this is a sell vacuum to support and it it raced and then it came up then we could think that bears are hitting out because now there is literally no bear bar Bull gaps are still open. See some profit taking at yesterday's high, and then they start. Then bulls start to get strong bars. Here's another dump, but this bar ends up being a trading range bar. Not it, although it does have a big bear body. Body the wick is bigger than the body, so it's a trading range bar. There are only two types of bars. There are trend bars and trading range bars, and here we have a good example of both. A trading range bar, I mean, excuse me, a trend bar is when a candle opens and trends away and closes. So that's what, so this candle is a trend bar. So it opened low and it trended away from the open and closed high. This is a range bar because there's, it opened, it came up and sold off. It has buyers and sellers. Dojis don't mean, it aren't necessarily a signal on their own. However, if they're in the right context, then that's okay. Here, I thought was some pretty good dojis. These are dojis, but they're in the right context, and there's two of them after two legs down, and that they led to a credible leg up. Bulls are keeping gaps open again. So, here. Starting to see bullish pressure pick up. Bears are not able to I'm gonna delete the old high bears are not able to make new lows bulls are making new highs now they continue to put bars in but I don't think it's a very strong trend because of all the dojis when when bulls let me pause it doji doji when we see dojis in a strong trend it could mean the trend is coming to an end and we have first leg so one two three so this could be the final leg and bears get three strong bars at above yesterday's high so people might be seeing this as a reversal so these three strong bars could be have more weight than these she bars we don't really know three excuse me my mouth is dry so these three bars mean different than these three bars because they're happening in different areas these happened into the EMA and these are happening after a move so it could be profit taking or it could be bear shorting there are a lot of bears still looking at the day remember the first six bars of the day were bear bars so there's definitely bears looking at the day they're like what's going on is the bear trap did we race to support and start a bull trend was this a spike in a channel lots of ways to look at it bears pull back into the EMA and bulls buy the EMA the bear gaps are just, I mean, the bull gaps are open now. So I'm, I'm going to delete these, but you guys can start to see what I'm talking about with these gaps here. How we can measure strength for the markets. I'll just leave that one just so we kind of remember the opening gap. Bulls are buying the EMA. Price stalling, and then they start pushing higher. That's great for the bulls, and bulls want to see a high above this. They get a strong close, so it would be reasonable to hold. 
However, here, this doji after a new high is bad follow through after an extended move. Leg one, leg two, leg three. See how price action is fractal where this could be leg one, leg two, leg three, and then the price expands, so the pattern expands. Leg one, leg two, leg three. Bulls are not getting strong closes above new highs, at new highs, so we can start to see a pullback, leg one, leg two, leg three, into the EMA. And they start to dump, so bears are in the market now after seeing this leg. I think that's the day yeah so we end the day with a double top that's I'm not gonna say good or bad it's just the that's what the pattern is it's a double top lower high and they close below the EMA if the bulls wanted a strong trend you know they would try their best to keep the markets above the EMA but they close below it which is not good for the bull case in anyway we're just updating the I like to update the chart why you guys are seeing so we can kind of start to grow together some of you are trading mnq it moves pretty close to es a lot of you are trading the e-mini so it's cool and i know the oh wait this is <laughs> and I, the reason i only have these two levels is because sure this is an intraday level but i'm not going to leave that on my chart for tomorrow to me this is gone um, that doesn't mean I'm gonna ignore it if price bounces because at the end of the day this is a this is what is going on <laughs> this is a range so maybe the this will be a PT tomorrow but I'm not gonna mark that on my chart today I like to keep a really ch clean chart and so so trying to expand my trying to get better at the market cycle these are today these are the only two lines I have so we can see what range we're in However, now I have the weekly, the last week's high and last week's low on the five minute chart. So like it's getting kind of hairy because we are trading in the middle of last week's range. So I think it'll be interesting what happens. We just closed above last week's range. And I think that's pretty important context because look, for tomorrow, now, now we're looking like thinking a little bit ahead. Tomorrow is a double top and bears are trying to keep keep the close between last week's range wait they're trying to close the 50 percent level with, they're trying to close below the 50 percent level of last week's range because if they do that it'll give the appearance of a bear flag pull back 50 percent sell so it's i think i think like these are good dates they're not like heebie-jeebie numbers i don't know what those twitter guys come up with everything i, I kind of want to keep this i'll keep this on a different chart that's important to remember and with that being said, we could do the same thing for the monthly highs and lows, but I like to take it a step at a time. So maybe at the end of next month, I'll add another two dates to the five minute chart, if that makes sense. So I hope you guys can kind of see how the chart context is expanding. And yeah, that's today. It was pretty good for the bulls. They got their bull channel, two days. Spike pullback channel, man, that's pretty. It gets pretty nifty when you you study a little bit and you can start to recognize these things. I remember when I first studied Al Brooks, I was like, there's just no chance. I have no chance, but every day, a little piece of the puzzle gets uncovered. Here we are on the daily chart. This is last week's high and last week's low. I'm gonna change these to purple so they're congruent with D5 minute. <sighs> That's the last, th you guys are never gonna hear me sing again. Okay, there we go. So this is last week's high, last week's low, last week's high, last week's low, and this is the 50% level. And on the daily chart, that actually looks like a strong close. I'm not gonna lie, on the five minute, it looks a little different. On five minute kind of has a bearish appearance, but the daily chart looks like they wanna pull back to maybe the EMA or last week's high or the pivot, the swing, the pivot, the breakout point. Tomorrow is FOMC. That's sketchy. I'm not trading any more news days. I've got an idea and I'm gonna play it out. So markets are in a range, no, because we could say yeah, lower time frames bull trend, but we're coming off lows. We're under the EMA, so we do have a little bit of a bearish bias. We hit the middle of this range and bounced hard. That's pretty cool. Do you remember what I just said about the five-minute chart? How I was like. 
I don't put heebie-jeebie. I don't put heebie-jeebie levels and blah blah blah. What did I say? And then, and then I said that doesn't mean I'm gonna ignore this. That this could be a fifty percent. So we're on the five minute chart, and on and this range could be a good target. I'm not saying this is tomorrow's target. Please don't short and hold to this level. I'm just like giving examples of a uh, price action right now, a fractal price action. This is the five minute chart, but we were just reading the daily chart with the same exact idea. Getting back to the apex of this. You guys see what I mean? I don't know if that's actually the, that, that's kind of like around the 50% of this box, this range, because that's a, that's fair value. The market sees an agreement here. So it was overpriced, overpriced. Now they're like, Oh, we kind of like this price. Maybe we bounce up. Maybe, who knows? We come up to this box, or we come up to this box. But the market's always looking for a fair value, and it moves off missed prices. I just thought that was cool on the fly. Like, oh wait, same PT on the five minute, same PT on the daily. Hourly chart is looking. See, the hourly chart gives a scary, scary kind of, kind of little like a two-legged pullback for the bulls. Leg one, leg two. It'll be interesting to see what, uh, I don't care what Jerome Powell says, but I care what he says in terms of what happens in the markets. So it'll be interesting to see what how the markets react to Jerome Powell's speech tomorrow. If maybe we rip EOD or we sell EOD or we range and everyone gets shredded to pieces. It's gonna be fun. Hope you guys are studying. Jared, I got your emails a little late. They got transferred over to the on the Google thought it was a spam and I didn't think to check the spam folder and I was like I don't get why he would say he's gonna email me and not email me and then I just click let me check the spam folder so thank you for emailing me your stats and everything like that that's super sick you did that have, have a good day guys leave comments on what type of trades you're taking you don't have to trade the e-mini you don't have to just tell me what you guys are up to have a good day everybody happy Halloween